Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today we meet with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. John, good to see you again. Uh, it's good to be back. I have been fortunate enough to join you for a number of meals when you come to the West Coast and uh, review restaurants. Didn't we and, have a uh, time? Oh, I've, I've always had a great time and wonderful, wonderful uh, meals. But it's always struck me how um, how you can do it in terms of uh, the food. It, it's 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 fabulous, but it's there's a lot of it. And you do sometimes. I know you've done three meals a day to, to review different restaurants. Um, and recently, you wrote an article for Forbes about that. I'll call it the dangers of being a restaurant reviewer. The health health dangers. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, everybody eats three meals a day. You may have noticed. Um, they don't all do it in the restaurants, but uh, it is true that sometimes I will have a lunch out and a dinner out. Or if it's if, if specifically if it's this really cool breakfast place, I would go there too. But um, generally speaking, uh, that is part of the routine, and it's a difficulty which some have run into to the deleterious effect on their health. Uh, Pete Wells, the uh, 12 years a slave to being restaurant reviewer for the New York Times, uh, just resigned because it was getting to his health. He, say, he says it's his cholesterol, his heart, his liver, all of those vital signs. His doctor says, you got to stop. You know, you just got to stop. And after 12 years, he did, after reviewing 100 restaurants, the 100 best restaurants in New York, um, include, in, 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 which did not even include the ones that he was doing weekly. And um, uh, and he goes on to say that some restaurant critics, you know, died at very early age, 59, 67, 62. Uh, but others have lived to be like maybe Sheridan, his predecessor, ties 97 years old. Um, now, I'm in my late 70s and I thank God. Well, it's not God. Well, let's take him out of the quotient here, uh, except for my genes. Uh, all the women in my family lived to be 90 or so, 89, 90, 93. Okay? So that's good. Thank God for that. Um, I go to my doctor regularly and for years they're saying, eh, try to lose 10 pounds. You know, this is up a little bit. This is up a little bit. But it is true that from the time I started uh, reviewing and writing about um, food and restaurants. You know, I was young. My wife and I were very young. Our metabolism was different. We were walking a lot in the cities and so forth. So I never had to worry. But it did creep up so that by 1980, 85, I realized that I couldn't fit into my suits anymore. Uh, well, just buy larger, darker suits. Um, but it did come to a point, just because you're enjoying yourself and you're drinking the wine you're, and drinking in, in rest, in, eating in restaurants that have a lot of uh, heaviness uh, to them. But I wasn't crazy over the top or obese or anything. So um, my doctor says, yeah, I try to lose 10 pounds. Um, and I lost 20. And I did so only, guys, I swear, I did so only by cutting back on everything. I eat exactly the same stuff as I always ate, lots of butter. Well, not lots of butter anymore. A modicum amount of butter. <laughs> bread, stuff myself with bread. I don't stuff myself with bread. I have ice cream every night if I want it, but I don't have, you know, a cold chocolate sundae every night. Um, foie gras, you, you name it. Um, so if you watch me eat, and John, you've been with me, especially if I'm with, let's say, four people at the table, I'll taste what they have uh, on their plates. Uh, John had the lamb. Give me a little morsel of the lamb and then the, the potato there. And, and or you're having the fish, so please um, you know, save that little center part for me where it's flushing. Um, that's the way I eat. So I'm certainly not starving myself, and I never feel uh, hungry as a result. But I just I just lost 20 pounds and kept it off. I went out and had five suits made in the, in the last year. I feel great. And uh, I've kept it off. So I'm not saying that I was so much healthier than I was 20 years ago, um, but I'm about as healthy as I was 20 years ago. So it can be done. And it's also due to the fact that, okay, genes matter, watching yourself, <clears throat> not real big on exercise, but also eating the best food. By that I mean 
<coughs> wholly unprocessed. I don't go for fast food. I don't go for junk food. I don't snack <coughs> between meals ever. I may have a piece of chocolate, like Halloween sized chocolate, uh, in the afternoon if I want it. But I just stay away from everything. And the food that I'm eating is going to be the freshest and the best that those chefs know how to buy. Yeah. <coughs> Consequently, I'm eating a lot of good vegetables, excellent beef, superb pork, which is not filled with stuff, or chickens, which is filled with all sorts of brine and, and so forth. The seasonal, the seasonal uh, ingredients. Uh, I, for right now, the basil is out, so I'm having a lot of pesto instead of tomato sauce in my pastas, you know. Um, Shad roe has its seasons. Uh, Soft shell crabs has its seasons. So I eat the way a lot of the world does in Italy and and uh, Europe and Spain and, uh, because what is available to them is much fresher, much higher quality, unprocessed. Um, and I, I, I just keep away from all of that stuff that uh, that is bad for you. And in fact, it, it is. So you can do it. Um, but I should say that people say, God, you, I would I would do anything to have your job, just to eat out, <laughs> just to eat out every day. Whoa, that's not what I'm paid for. <laughs> I'm paid to eat something and then to go home and write the best way I can that will get past an editor <clears throat> and be enjoyed by the reader, informs you of what is good and bad about this restaurant. That's what I get paid for. That's my job. Eating is not the job. It's like uh, a movie critic. Movie critic, oh boy, just go to the movies all day. Um, no, you got to go home and make some sense out of those movies uh, for your readers. So if you are not a writer and inclined to meet deadlines, meaning that, oh, you got this, this is due by, by Wednesday? Yeah, it's absolutely due by Wednesday, not Thursday morning. Uh, so that's how it goes. To say I haven't enjoyed 50 years of doing this, would be preposterous. I've enjoyed literally every moment of it and hope to do it for another 50 years. Well, <laughs> smaller portions and uh, enjoying Larger, darker suits. fresh food. And thank God you've got the genes that are going to keep you writing until 90. I love that. love to hear that because well, all your writing, writing makes my yeah. mouth water. I, that's important is I really love writing. One of the things that Pete Wells said in his farewell was that he just wasn't hungry anymore and he just didn't want to go to restaurants and have to write about them the next day. Yeah. I get up in the morning and just can't wait to write. Well, I think that one of the takeaways from this thing uh, for all of us who are in our second act and are living longer, healthier lives, being a food critic is not a job to die for. Mm -hmm. Not worth it. It's worth mm -hmm. to eat for. Anyway, thank you well, for your I think, reviews. I, what? I think the most important takeaway is that everybody needs to go to johnmariani.com, ah. sign up for the free newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet, and enjoy your writing about all these wonderful places and all this fabulous food. I'm coming to your town. A, a, right website, a website that's calorie free. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.